Okay, so I'm going to show you how to create an emitter material. So uh, I'm just going to create a new folder called uh, 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 emitters and triggers. Okay, so we're going to put everything in this folder. But much like I've shown you in the past, just take the thing that you just created, because we're going to do a bunch of stuff to it and give it a color. So give it a new color that's not like the other ones. That way you know it's your stuff. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make a material. I'm going to give this one blue. This one's going to be blue. And I'm going to double click on it. And now there, there's the one constant, two constant, three constant. The one we want is the three constant. So the hotkey, it says it right here is three. So click three. And I want to click on this here and give it a color. So I said blue. Now just move this up and then you see there's the actual color because if you leave it the way it is, it stays down there. So click OK. And you'll see that turns. And now if I drag this into emitters, it won't really do much. It'll be kind of a nice color, but not really that great. So Alt, click, remove that. I'm going to add a multiply node. Okay. Whoops, that's the wrong one. And I want to click the M key and click. So that's a very commonly used node. So we're going to go here. And I'm going to go into emissive color. And you see here how we have one. Let's go and write like 12. Press enter. And so I just created an emitter material. So I can even go a little more than that. Maybe I want to go 22. Let's see what 22 looks like. So it'll when you add this to a material in your level, it will glow. And in fact, I'm going to show you which material I want to do and add it to. We're going to add it to a statue that we're going to use to trigger. So um, I'm going to create a blueprint right here in the emitters and triggers. And I'm going to call um, a blueprint class, call it an actor. And we're going to go uh, rename that. We want to make sure to rename it trigger good. Okay. So just double click on this. And I'm going to actually go get a static mesh component. And so that's going to be my statue. You can rename it to statue if you want. Okay. And I'm going to go down here and just write statue. Now, you probably have only one unless you add some kind of pack. And so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to click the lock and I'm going to click like, I don't know, let's go with seven. Okay. See what happens. So it's, whoa, it's a little bit too big. So maybe four. Press enter. And I want to see here where the material is. I'm going to make sure that in my third person, I still have this selected. And then I'm going to go back to uh, my trigger. And I'm going to make this material. So there you go. So I've created the trigger. Uh, but now what I want to do is I want to add some code to it. So this is the viewport. And over here under the event graph, this is where all the action happens. And what I'm going to do is on begin overlap. And if I go scroll all the way down here, and I'll see is when I have overlapped. Well, actually, I have to add trigger so let's do that first um actually maybe it'll work anyways let's go on begin overlap so whenever my character walks over the statue um i need to well i need to tell the the uh code that it is my third person character so right third um uh on begin Give me a second here. So I want to type cast to third person character. And it'll do this. And I want to give myself like a super jump. So um alright set max jump count. And we're gonna go three. And it'll apply this to us, our character. And what we want to do is for the actor to be destroyed once we overlap this. Destroy. Whoops, I can't, can't speak here. I can't write. Destroy actor. Okay, so that's the first part. So let's compile and save this. This movement is not a character. Therefore, target must have a connection. Oh, so that's, see, I forgot that. So let's compile again. So now we're good. 
So now we need to go to our third person character. So under contents, under third person blueprint, go to blueprint and open this. Okay. And well, you're going to see, I already did it, but I'm going to just hide this. Um, so what I need to do is in the same event, in the event graph for this third person, I have to uh, basically uh, add the code. So we're going to add a, a new. So on event movement mode changed, we want that in whenever a new movement, we want to add um, equal to double check. Is that the one? And I want to, no, give me a second here. So I want to go equal enum. And I want to go whenever I'm falling, that it'll trigger this off. And here we want to just add a variable called get jump max count. We're going to set an integer, so equal, oops, equal to equal integer, and we had written three, so we're going to go three. We're going to just add a branch, so we click B, so it creates a branch, and I want to connect my branch with this node here that's on movement mode changed, so that this basically executes, okay? So we're actually going to add here, whenever we're falling, we also need another branch. And we're actually going to go and put it in here instead. And we're going to hook that over here. And it still basically executes. So if we're falling, it'll see if we're in a double jump that's, that's coming down. And if so, it will end it. And to set it to true, I'm going to set a delay. And this is basically going to say how long I want my power up to last. So let's go with 10 seconds. You can make it a little longer, but not too much because it's supposed to be uh, fun. So let's compile and save this. So before I forget, I want to reset the jump count to one so without the power up. So set jump max count. So originally it was one, so we need to have it back at one. And I want this to execute only once and stop like looping so what i need to do is type in a code called do once and so this will prevent it from re-triggering over and over and what i want to do is i'm going to drag this over here and maybe if i double click here it'll create a new node and if we get this you can drag it down and let's just compile and save this okay so i'm going to go to my level and i want to go and drag my uh, emitter so uh, oops where did i put that oh right here so i want to put this right in the level so that my character can trigger it and i'm going to click play and see what happens well first of all i want this is what my jump normally looks like okay so that's kind of important so let's head to the statue you gotta overlap it and okay what am i missing Well, I didn't put the trigger because I thought I didn't need it, but I think I do need it. So I'm going to go over here and add a component called a box trigger. So I'll have to put that box collision. And I'm going to copy this code. Well, I'm going to delete that one. Copy this code, Control X. Go to the box and on begin overlap with the box instead. And I'm going to just go here and control B and just tie that in there and not do not forget to tie this in. And I will now go back to my viewport and you see the box here using the WER keys. Make sure it's selected. Let's move it. Whoops. Let's not move this up. But we want to select on the box and WER. Um, Make that really big and fit the whole thing in there. 
And there we go. And I'm going to make it even wider so that it has time to trigger as it gets close to it. Not too much, though. So save. Let's have a look now. Okay, so let's press play. So you can see I should probably put it a little higher here. Press play. Let's see here. So I'm going to run up to it. So there you go. Now, see, I, got, I have a really high jump. So there's my... No, you could make it even higher than, than three. And again, you could, for three seconds, maybe that's all you want. So there you go. That's the first type code that you could uh, put in as a power-up for your, your game. Thanks.